Bananas are an example of objects that are perceived as having one single color. That one color is the typical color of bananas. Of course, this talk is not just bananas, but it applies to all kinds of realistic stimuli that are perceived as having specific colors. The underlying challenge is that a real object does not have a uniform color. The diagram on the right side illustrates the color distribution of the photo on the left. Each dot corresponds to a pixel in the photo on the left, and you can see that there are a lot of different dots sparing in lightness, hue, and saturation. The question is now, how do we identify a unique color that we consider to be representative and typical for the object, such as the typical yellow of a banana? We propose that we can reduce the color distribution to a dominant hue. This is illustrated by the image in the second row. The colors of the banana in the second row are manipulated. All the colors in that lower second image lie along a line in color space. To be more precise, actually a plane if you also consider variation in lightness, which is perpendicular to the two chromatic axes. But this implies that the banana in the lower image has only one single hue. This hue may be found by a principal component analysis, and we will call it dominant hue. Yet I hope you can see with your own eyes that the two bananas on the left are strikingly similar. And this was the aim of this study, to show that observers largely neglect any color variation away from the dominant hue. To show this, we presented the one hue image together with three original images and participants in our study had to indicate which one is different from the others. In this example, it is the bottom right one. Now, if you find this difficult, there's already some support for the idea that we may represent the object color by the dominant hue. But to assess the difficulty of this task, we had a comparison condition. In that comparison condition, we did not change the shape of the distribution, but we rotated it. Here you see the original distribution in gray. The red line indicates the dominant hue as a reference. And the new black dots here are the same as the gray dots in the background. The only difference is that the black dots are all rotated by 5 degrees, resulting in a banana that is slightly redder than the original there on the right side. The red lines are only there to give a better impression of the size of the rotation. The image on the right corresponds to the distributions of the black dots in the center. We also measured how well participants could detect the images with rotated hue. And in this example, the odd one is the upper right banana. Then we compared the performance for identifying the one hue images with the performance for identifying the rotated hue images. Here you can see the proportions of correct answers for each object and each condition. For most objects, the one hue version was still more difficult to distinguish from the original than the rotated hue version. This can be seen by the gray bars here and here being lower than the blue and red bars here. Objects where this did not work were either control objects, like the frog and the rose, that appear to have more than one color or objects where all conditions were not distinguishable from the original, like here for hashtag the dress, which is all close to chance level. Response times confirmed these results. And since the hue rotations were so tiny, also compared to discrimination thresholds, these results support the idea that observers could barely see the difference between original and one hue images. We also obtained similar results in a second experiment in which we used unrecognizable shapes. This suggests that familiarity with the objects barely contributes to the fo focus on dominant hue. And in a third experiment, we showed that observers were able to identify the one hue images when we showed them what to look for, such as the stem in case of the cherries here. Taken together, 
Our results show that for many objects, the hue variation away from the dominant hue is negligible. This is partly because the small hue variation in such objects is barely visible, and partly because observers focus on the dominant hue and neglect variation away from the dominant hue. This implies that the dominant hue is pretty much representative of the full color distribution. And these results explain how human observers receive, perceive and represent the colors of objects. These findings also imply that we can simplify the color distribution in all those images by projecting them on their dominant hue. And this may be very useful for computational representations of object colors. Thank you very much for watching that far, and I hope you have a lot of questions for me. Bye, guys.